doing this for a long time. Ever since I was a little girl, and I don't care what nobody else do. That's what gets me so mad with Irvin. White folks always try to be put out with you all the time and too cheap to buy me Coca-Cola. I let them know it though. Ma don't stand for that. Wanna take my voice and trap it inside some fancy boxes with all their buttons and dials. And too cheap to buy me a Coca-Cola? It don't cost but a nickel a bottle. They don't care nothing about me. All they want is my voice. Why well, learn that? And they gonna treat me how I wanna be treated, no matter how much it hurt them. They back there now, calling me all kinds of names, calling me everything but a child of God. They can't do nothing else, though. They ain't got what they wanted. As soon as they get my voice, now I'm on the records. They ain't got no more use for me then. I know what I'm talking about. You wait and see. Watch. And Irvin back there with the rest of them, too. He don't care nothing about me. He been my manager for six years, always talking about sticking together. And the only time he had me over at his house was to sing for some of his friends. Oh, if you color and can make them some money, you all right with them. Otherwise, you're just a dog in the alley. I done made this record company more money than all the other recording artists put together. Now, you bought it then for Donnell. That's what you did. So you can go sit there and watch your football games. But what about the kitchen? The bathroom? I mean, how many windows does the bedroom have? Is there a place for Jesse to play? How much closet space does it have? You just can't surprise me with the house and expect me to say, Oh, Darnell, that's nice. At one time I would have, but I'm not 17 no more. I have responsibilities. I want to know if it has a hookup for the wash and dry because I've got to wash Jesse's clothes. I want to know if it has a yard or do it have a fence or how far Jesse has to go to school. I'm not thinking about where to put the TV. That's not what's important to me. And you supposed to know, Darnell. You supposed to know what's important to me. Like I'm supposed to know what's important to you. I am asking you to do it by yourself. Me and this together, I'm here with you. See, house or no house, I mean, we still don't have food money. But if you would have come and told me, if you would have shared that with me, we could have went to my mother and got food money. But you just did this all wrong. You did the right thing, but you just did it wrong. Everybody got a waiting list. <sighs> Most people don't understand, but they think he don't understand nothing. You know? But he understand everything just fine. Most of the time, he understand things better than they do. trust that adventure. <laughs> I've been on one since I was nine years old. That's how old I was when Mama sent me to live with Miss Tyler. Miss Tyler gave me her name, Esther Tyler. 
I don't tell nobody what I was called before that. The only person that knows is my mama. I got a strong memory. I got a long memory. People say you're crazy to remember, but I ain't afraid to remember. I try to remember out loud, keep my memories alive, I feed them. I gotta feed them, otherwise they'd eat me up. <laughs> oh, I got memories that go way back. I don't trust none of these men, Jack or nobody else. These men liable to do anything. They just wait until they get one woman tied and locked up with them. Then they look around and see if they can get another one. Molly don't pay them no mind. One just as good as the other, if you ask me. I ain't never met no man that meant nobody no good. My mother sent a letter from Elmore. He had the nerve to write me. I can't stand no jealous man. He was always like that. I ain't done nothing to make him jealous when I met him. He don't know that just make you want to leave him quicker. He's trying to hold on to you and end up driving you away. Elmore started to get mean. So I left him. Everybody seen me and Leroy together and knew I had quit Elmore. I told Leroy Elmore was jealous of him. He said he didn't care. Say he still loved me. Asked me who did I love and I told him the truth. I didn't love neither one of them. They both was nice in their own ways. Then they got into a fight. And I tried to tell them, Ruby don't belong to nobody, and Ruby ain't gonna take but so much of anybody. After the fight, I saw Elmore, and he asked me where Leroy was, saying he wanted to go make up. I told him Leroy was at the barbershop, and he went up there and shot him before Leroy had a chance to say anything. These men make all these babies and then run off and leave you to take care of them. Talking about they want to see what's on the other side of the hill. I make sure I don't get no babies. My mama taught me how to do that. The problem with Elmore was he never could get enough of me. He used to tell me he wanted to take it all so nobody else could have me. He wasn't going to leave none for nobody else to hear him tell it. That make you feel funny to be with a man that want to use you up like that. Molly Cunningham ain't gonna be tied down with no babies. Had me a man one time who I thought had some love in him. Come home one day and he was packing his trunk. Told me the time had come when even the best of friends must part. Say he was gonna send me a special delivery some old day. I watched him out that window when he carried that trunk out and down to the train station. Said if he was going to send me a special delivery, I wasn't going to be there to get it. Now I done found out the harder you try to hold on to him, the easier it is for some gal to pull him away. Molly done learned that. That's why I don't trust nobody but the good Lord above. And I don't love nobody but my mama. You jump, but I'm falling too. I'm the wife of Harmon Wilkes. I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you. I don't know what to do. How to be a mother. Seems you either love too much or you don't love enough. Don't seem like there's no middle ground. That's all the governor see. Any of our board members see what all our friends see. I mean, I've tied myself so tight to you that there is no me. And I don't know if I can carry this one. I am a sinner too. What happens when that caves in? I have questions too. I mean, you're acting like this kid who because things don't go his way, takes his ball and go home. I got a life too. I gave up 18 years of my life to stand right here in the same spot with you. I'm Aluka. She's 10 years old. And I'm still trying to figure out life trying to figure out what happened. Next thing I know, she groaned, talking about she a woman. Just because you lay down and open your legs for some man don't make you no woman. I tried to tell her that. You not the only one that got wants and needs, Troy. But I held on to you. I took all my wants and my needs, my dreams, and I 
buried them deep inside you. I planted a seed and I watched and I prayed over it. I planted myself inside you and waited to bloom. And it didn't take me no 18 years to figure out that the soil was hard and rocky and it wasn't never going to bloom, but I held on to you, Troy. I held you tighter. That's what your problem is. You've always been the kid who had the ball. You had a bag in the glove, too. You had a life when nobody else had one. All your life, you had things go your way. You was my husband. And I owed you everything that I had. Every part of me that I could find to give you. And upstairs in that room, with the darkness falling in on me, it took everything that I had had to erase the doubt that you wasn't the finest man in the world and wherever you was going I wanted to be there because I was your wife you were my husband and that is the only way I was going to survive as your wife you always talking about what you give and what you don't have to give but you take too you take and you don't even know nobody's giving she don't know nothing about life what she know you talking you ain't taking this piano out of my house Look at this piano. Look at it. I'm a old polished piano with her tears for 17 years. 17 years she rubbed on it until her hands bled. Every day God breathed life into that woman's body. She rubbed and cleaned and polished and prayed over it. Play something for me, Bernice. Play something for me, Bernice. <laughs> Every day. I cleaned it up for you. Play something for me, Bernice. You know? I'm always talking about your daddy. Yeah. You ever stop to think about what his foolishness cost your mama? Huh? 17 years of empty beds and cold nights. And for what? A piano? A piece of wood? Get even with somebody? I look at you and you're all the same. You, Papa Boy Charles, whining boy, Doka, Crowley. You all alike. All the thieving and killing and thieving and killing. What did it ever lead to? More thieving and killing. I ain't never seen it come to nothing. People getting shot. People getting burned up. People falling down their wells. It don't ever stop.